Hello, and thank you for tuning in. My name is Jared Merkel, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Wyoming. And today I'm gonna to present to you a new global initiative on ungulate migrations. We call it the global initiative on ungulate migration. And what's in this talk today is gonna to be a little bit of overview of migration ecology and some of the threats to migration, the history of our initiative, and then talking about how we can see conserving ungulate migrations into the future through mapping migrations. And I'll end with a few final thoughts. So let's just dive in now. Ungulate migrations have fascinated humans for centuries. Big animals moving in big groups across big landscapes is an amazing phenomenon. It has ecological processes that it supports and also cultural components. People have been relying on these animals for centuries, most for food, but also for cultural importance. And these big animals migrate for a number of reasons. They're trying to get to seasonal ranges where they can find food at certain times of the year. They also move and migrate to get away from seasonal ranges that are inhospitable during certain times of the year. For instance, ungulates living in a mountainous environment often spend the winters in low elevation, less food, but they can be there during the winter where it's tolerable. Then they migrate to higher elevations where there's abundant forage, but in the summer, but in the winter, those areas become quite inhospitable. Because these animals are able to do these big movements facilitates the big numbers of these animals we have on earth. Yet many of these species, as they move, have to deal with the things that humans have put on the landscape. And that includes roads, fences, development, et cetera. And what we're learning more and more is that in many cases, some of these herds and these species can deal with these roads but they change their behavior. They change their habitat selection. They slow down. They have smaller movements. And that has facilitated a reduced number of animals that can do this in the world. And furthermore, we know that we've lost some migratory herds already. And data are compiling that we're losing more and more of these in the future. It's hard to determine because we didn't know what we had in the past because these movements are elusive often, and it's hard to understand when an animal moves one or 200 kilometers. And so we've lost some of these herds in the past, and we'll probably never get them back. And we don't want that to happen in the future. But the problem is, is humans are not slowing down in their population growth, in their extent of use of the earth, for instance, just the road network is still expanding. And there are predictions that in 30 years, there's gonna be another 25 million kilometers of new roads. So how are we gonna conserve these ungulate migrations while also developing earth for humans? Well, that's where mapping comes in. And the way we see with the, ungulate, at the global initiative on ungulate migration, conservation occurring, is through the mapping of these animal movements. And let me explain to you why it works. So what you're seeing here is a map of a high use migration corridor of a mule deer herd in Western United States. And in purple here is the high use corridor mapped on top of land ownership, development, different environmental components. And once these corridors are mapped, on the ground, biologists, conservation practitioners can pour through these maps and start to piece together where the threats occur for these big movements. And in this case, there's this very unique spot where thousands of animals were moving between a lake and a development called Pinetail or a small town. And all these animals were moving through this small pinch point and there was a piece of property that was for sale and slated for development. Once this map was made and this property was identified as potentially a, a way to sever this migration, it was so easy to get the funding, to get the on the ground, the support from the high level to the, the local level 
to purchase this property and turn it into a habitat conservation property and keep this migration connected. But not only can this mapping migration corridors help us at the fine scale with conservation, but it can help us at the broader scale as well. If we zoom out on this migration, here in the upper left here is that little spot we were talking about. But we can have spots like that all across these bigger movements and start to think about what is the most important and the biggest threats. And we can then prioritize our limited conservation dollars across these migrations. So mapping facilitates this conservation both at the fine scale and at this broader scale. And because of this need to map, and that there are not very many migrations mapped, was really the impetus for the global initiative on ungulate migration. And the history is quite simple. And that is about three years ago, there was a movement ecology conference in Italy, and a number of researchers sat together that studied big game migrations and started to compare notes about what the threats and what the issues with conservation were. And the main thing that kept coming up was that we have a lot of data, but we've never been able to map these migrations in a way that can facilitate conservation. There was a missing link from the data in building those maps. And that's where we developed the Global Initiative on Ungulate Migration. And the original advisory team is the folks that you see here from all across the world. And since that meeting in 2019, we've developed the Global Initiative on Ungulate Migration into a 100-person participant list that includes both researchers and practitioners across the world. We've de developed an infrastructure, raised some money, and also have created um, a commentary that kind of develops our ideas in a, in a way that we could communicate to the rest of the world our ideas. And the objectives of the Global Initiative on Ungulate Migration are quite simple and threefold. The first is to develop this atlas of ungulate migration. And the idea here is to take GPS data, create these maps, and make those maps available to conservation practitioners. The second objective is to build this collaborative network that we're already doing, bringing together researchers and field biologists, conservation practitioners to compare notes, to think about what works and what doesn't work, to synthesize the literature, et cetera. And then finally, the idea with bringing people together and comparing notes is to potentially stimulate research that can be helpful for conservation. And that research could in involve understanding the drivers, the mechanisms, the threats, and the conservation solutions, common and uncommon to ungulate migrations worldwide. And everything within the global initiative is based on one little bit of technology that is so essential to mapping. And that is, you see this Monaco here in Patagonia, has this collar on it. And on this collar, is what we call a GPS unit that collects locations, very precise locations, every one to two hours for a couple of years of this animal's life. And those GPS points provide us the movement paths, the places that the animal spends time and avoids. But most importantly, over time, it gets us thousands of data points about the life of this animal. And if you think about a herd of animals that we monitored, 30, 40, 50 of them, we're talking millions of points of data. And when you map those millions of points of data, it's a mess and it's hard to understand what you're seeing. And so what the Global Initiative on Ungulate Migration is doing is taking those raw data and turning them into what we call derived corridors. And we're basing this on a number of different research studies that can take GPS data, identify where these animals are moving, connect those dots with lines, create what we call polygons so the movement has width to it and space to it on the landscape. And then we can simply stack up those polygons to begin to understand where most of the animals migrate and where other animals spend less time. And that gives us a what we call this derived corridor or an area of high use of the landscape that is most important for that herd and most important 
for conservation. And how we, in, oh, excuse me, and here is those, those maps in, in, in progress. And so what we see here in red is a high use migration corridor. The lines are in black. And what we can do is this can be create, this map, this polygon of high use can now be used in management plans and policy in documents that are trying to figure out where are the most important areas to conserve and not conserve. And in this case, you can see two areas in this highway where these, the majority of these animals cross. Those areas can be focused in on for overpasses or underpasses, for instance. Now, the way we envision this working is that we have the on the ground, the field biologists and researchers collecting data, developing those tracking studies and building the, the, the raw data for the movements of these animals. And then either those people analyze those data to create the, the corridor, the derived corridors, or they work with our mapping team to create those derived corridors. The raw GPS data is then returned to the researcher, but those derived corridors are then moved into our atlas of migration, um, atlas of ungulate migrations. And those corridors are then available to others to download, to use, to visualize, and to map for folks like NGOs on the ground practitioners. And stepping out, the, the framework of the global initiative on ungulate migration is really centered around this global atlas. And we have three arms that kind of feed into that global atlas. We have the regional teams, which are groups of researchers and practitioners that focus on different parts of the, the earth, that focus in on where are the data being collected, where are they not being collected? Where are there opportunities to work with folks on the ground, et cetera? Then we have the data team that works with the regional teams to connect field biologists, develop data sharing agreements, develop based on the needs of those folks in the field. And then the mapping team is really the analytical background that takes the raw data and turns that raw data into something usable for conservation. Then we have a research component where the idea is that folks interested in doing a research project with some of the data related to the global initiative on ungulate migration can submit one pagers saying, hey, this is something we would be interested in and they, we think this could benefit conservation in this way. And then finally, we've envisioned and we have a small communications team to make sure information about ungulate migration is communicated to the world. In society. So when we're thinking about the atlas, we have not built it yet, but I just want to show you how this might work. We have this database of these derived corridors that can then be plotted on a map. And if you look on the bottom left, you can basically see that there's an add data button. So one could add a property that they're interested in potentially developing or um, whether that development is going to overlap with some important movements of ungulates. Um, there's also a button to download data. So the, the user can take the data that they see and download it and use it for themselves. This is an example with in Western US called westernmigrations.net where these data are available, but we're planning to build this out to the entire world. And so once these maps and this atlas is developed, the vision is that on the ground conservation practitioners can download those data, visualize it, pour through those maps, look at where the important areas are, compare them to where the threats are, and potentially identify unique and important conservation success stories like this property in the Western United States. And stepping back, I hope I've shown you why these animals migrate, why it's important to us as humans, our culture, ecosystems, et cetera but highlighting the threats that these animals have and that those threats are not going away. And I hope to convince you that the vision of the Global Initiative on Ungulate Migration to map the, un the world's ungulate migrations is gonna be one of the most important things for facilitating conservation of these big ungulates moving in mass across big landscapes on earth. And I thank you very much for listening in. I'd like to acknowledge some very specific folks. First, the Global Initiative on Ungulate Migrations Advisory Board, that group 
that originally met. I'd also like to acknowledge the 100 participants within Guillaume that have provided their information, their knowledge of on the ground um, data and movements of these animals. And then finally, the Convention on Migratory Species, where our website is hosted, and you'll see it on the bottom left. And this map on the upper right basically demonstrates where all the participants are located across Earth. Thank you very much for your time. Please shoot us an email or contact us if you have any questions.